Well, hi guys. Thanks for stopping by again. Um, this time we're going to do the crane on top of the uh, the sump tower that I did uh, late last year. This should effectively join um, the boards uh, is so I can have two one-on-one -on -one games going on. Um, just like the battle report Jay just launched. It was so much fun to do. But it would have been neat if it wasn't a big group effort. Um, this wall piece is just beginning to really get out of control as far as the details that I want to just put onto it. Um, and I wanted to thank you guys so much for stopping by and uh, joining me with it. Um, you know, comments, critiques, any of that stuff, you can... <laughs> I'm open to all of it. So uh, it, there's been quite a few people that have actually given me ideas for this. Uh, yeah, should have probably done this one next instead of doing that sump wall, but I got a wild hair up my butt and decided to, you know, take a right turn. Um, yeah, I did some new video editing on this. Um, I hope you guys like it. Uh, like I said, I'm still learning all this stuff. So it's, <laughs> it's been quite a journey. I'm having a blast too. Um, thank you all for stopping by and we're going to get going on the video here. So, as with any good piece, we gotta start out from the beginning. This one started out with uh, some TT Combat uh, crane. Um, yeah, gotta dig through the massive bits pile. I kind of realized I'd not shown you guys this. Um, I know Chris mentioned it on the Sub City Radio Blast. Um, my bits pile, which is completely out of control. Uh, yeah, I work out of these bins. Um, they were organized at one point, but every time I end up doing something like this, they <laughs> get unorganized again and I forget to reset it. The detailing part here, uh, once again, working on new editing skills here. Um, I wanted to, uh, you know, I want a video where, you know, I don't, tell you guys what I do, but I kind of show you a little bit more in depth. Um, and I wanted to make that a little bit more interesting to watch. Um, I know a lot of you like the walkthrough, so I added those in. Um, you can still see me working here, and I, I really think that's important for my videos. Um, yeah, I don't ever want to tell you what to do, but I really, really, really want to show you what I want to do. And unfortunately, as far as watching the videos, this is kind of the boring part, you know, um, especially for people that, you know, aren't into it as deep as I am. This is a hobby. It's fantastic. Um, I, yeah, go overboard. You know, whatever. That's okay. Um, I'll let you guys uh, watch a little bit of this video here and uh, I should be back in a second here. getting on to uh, sand texture. Yeah, I, uh, pretty old school, use just PVA white glue. I'm using Mod Podge in this case. Um, and, you know, in this case, I'm gonna be sprinkling it on. You know, I've read some people that say they don't injure, you know, they don't have very good luck doing it this way. I don't know, I, I've never had a problem. I don't know if it's because I lay it on so thick um, or I just let it dry a long time. Usually at this point, I let it dry for a couple of days, you know, before I do anything to it. But uh, 
not entirely sure why. You know, I've never had a problem with it. So here we go. We're getting out of the airbrushing. Uh, primers down first. Um, going black, then we're gonna go with a brown. Um, I'm leaving the green paints until the very end. Um, yeah, there'll be a final green spray at the end. Uh, going up, not very hard on this because this is way up. Uh, you know, this piece is gonna go on top of that sump tower, which is already 15 inches tall. So uh, the sump doesn't, you know, it gets up there, but it's, you know, not quite as prevalent on the under, under brushing. But uh, yeah, we we mixed the primers again, and we got, uh, you know, a little little ink mixed with the primers, um, brown. Then we're gonna do a silver. Um, after that, and uh, then, you know, hazard stripes. yellow, cheap acrylic paint, not thinned down and sponged on. I have no idea what I was thinking. I got stuck on these hazard stripes. It's one of the reasons I don't have a lot of them on my pieces. <laughs> they require more patience than I usually have, but I really stuck myself into the middle of this one. She looks like a nice big bright banana now um, and I'm going to put black stripes on it and it's going to look like a banana black licorice candy cane um, yeah so things like this happen you just got to push through it um, and either you know this is usually a make or break point on a lot of these projects but I learned a long time ago that if you just keep going you can find new ideas to do with things um, I really found a good way of rusting this up decently um, yeah stay tuned Almost time for my favorite part, the oil paints. So we're gonna start out here uh, with several colors that are thinned down and using thick. Um, I gotta do something about those hazard stripes um, before I get to the rust point. But yeah, this step is just to get a nice coat of oil and get some darkness going on um, to start the process. So I'm gonna be fading everything in from this point. to get on here during this rusting process um, a lot of people have different views on how to apply rust do rust um, and, you know some like it a little bit some like it a lot some like it in between um, I generally kind of feel that uh, more is better at least in my pieces um, 
I do go for a little bit more of a, amazingly enough, cartoony, realistic look. I, I don't know how that works, but uh, it's just part of it. Um, yeah, so loading up on the, the oil paints um, and the weathering powders, it, you know, I, I, I really hope you guys enjoy this. Um, it's, it's been, it's a total ton of fun to do this. And a lot of my style that I kind of making here is based upon me having a good time doing it and not so much. The piece will look the way it's going to look. Um, it, it's going to definitely go the way that I want it to. Uh, but you know, I, I just I wanted to get on here and, and just kind of make a little bit of a point of these pieces need to look how you are happy with them. There's there's no other reason to do all of this stuff um, otherwise. Um, there's, you know, there's a lot of people that like to tell you what to do. And I'm here to tell you, you know, do what you want to do. You bought all this junk. Um, I know I did. I have, <laughs> it's kind of unquestioned at this point as to how much garbage that I have, you know, put into this. And, you know, the, the whole reason that I do it is because I have a good time. I have a good time playing this game. Um, just wanted to get on here right now at this point and share that with you. Um, also saves a lot of my rambling during the, <laughs> the voiceover part. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways, back to the video. Here we are to the next stage, getting to the end. Um, the weathering powders in this one really enhance my, my rust effects that I did with the oils. Um, it gives it that dry on top of the wet. Um, I, I can't tell you how much that I'm enjoying the way that's all turning out. Um, so some new editing shots here. Hopefully they're not too out of focus. <laughs> One of the big things that I was working on in my editing process was getting shots that were a little bit more in focus for you guys. Um, so here's the final green spray. Um, and as you can see, we're doing just the undersides for the most part. Um, once we get done with these walkthroughs here, yeah, we're almost ready to go. Um, we're going to have a walkthrough of the piece a little bit, and I hope you enjoy. Pretty exciting stuff here. I'm happy with the way this video looks. I'm really happy with how this board is looking. I can add another tile in between and have two split boards. Very exciting. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. And as always, please like and subscribe.